Hi everybody, welcome back to Flames Pyro Art for Beginners. We started a little project a few weeks ago working on a scorpion and I've had a few other jobs on so I've not been able to spend the time on the scorpion of late but today we've got a little chance to do a few hours and we'll see what um, we can come up with today regarding depth perception and pop which is what we're always striving for with our artwork I'm using the Optima medium spear shader and I've got the setting currently at two and a half At very early stages of this scorpion, as you can see, there's still graphite left on the piece, and I've just been starting to try and build up some shape and bulk to this main front pincer, and we are going to have some shadow casting from the whole piece. That will hopefully add that pop to it there's a way to go before we get there when you're trying to build like sort of bulk and depth to a piece of art you have to just with pyrography you have to layer up the piece you know with your bag burning essentially over the same area over and over again on a lighter heat setting and building up the like sort of tonal depth as you do that the heat absorbs into the wood and you can start to create real volume you know you your darker areas you can push them deeper and deeper back into the wood and then you can get your shapes and contours and all that magical stuff all eventually taking place as you layer up over and over over a particular area what i tend to do with my work and i think what a lot of pyrography artists do is we jump around a lot that means like you know we'll we'll work a certain area for a few minutes and then we may scoot over to a completely different area of the piece as we're feeling a way through the design we're trying to create as when I skip around it's I'm trying to feel my way into the piece of art and with this scorpion um, he's got a big stinging tail so we can get some really good shape to this it will take us a little while but we'll maybe have a little concentrate on this today I've just turned the heat up just a touch now to three because at the outer edges I want to go a little darker because if you're thinking about an object and say something like a, a stinging tail of a scorpion it won't be flat will it you know it's got an it's got a rounded shape and that's what we're trying to get the viewer to see you know that's what we're trying to capture so when people look at it they see this shape 
you know, and not just a flat tail or whatever, or whatever piece of art you're doing, but that actually there's depth and shape and stuff to it. And the way we do that is by our shading methods. When we're on the underneath of something, then we want to go darker. So that's right under here, where the underneath of this stinging tail would be, would naturally be darker, wouldn't it? Because it's got the less, least light coming from it, and we want to try and show that shape to it. So we have to have different tones of shading to build the shape up. And also when you're building shape to any particular item, move your strokes in the direction that you're trying to build. If you're trying to show, say, a ball effect, it's no good just flat shading like that because it wouldn't give you the effect that you're looking for. You have to move your pen in the direction of the shape that you're trying to achieve. And it, it's not a it's not like a a quick five minute job unfortunately. It's something that you could spend a few hours if you really want to get lost in the shape, the piece of art you're doing. You know, you, you could spend hours deepening the, the shape up, you know, getting more depth and shape to it. The, the piece like this it would evolve over a good few hours. So it depends on what level of pyrography you're looking to get yourself towards. You know, if you if you're looking to try and make realistic looking artwork, then you have to be prepared to spend the time in putting the detail and the care and attention into the piece especially when we're looking at trying to create an oval shape like this it, we have to gradually build our way there all my strokes are using like say three quarter tip just using around the angle tip of the pen and I'm flicking the strokes in the direction of the shape that I want, which in this occasion I want it to be a more rounded effect. And as you keep shading and shaping and layering up, eventually you will get to the point where you have got yourself a lovely shaped stinging tail or bowl or whatever shape it is that you're trying to achieve with your artwork it does, it does take patience low heat that is another key element of creating realistic pyrography Keep that heat setting down, don't let the pen dictate to you how fast you have to move and what shading is going on to the wood. You want to be in control of that at all times. So just if it if you feel like it's burning too hot, just turn your dial down and down until you find a comfortable level 
where it's just adding that nice level of shading that you can control you know as, as I'm touching down now it's adding light shading but it's shading I can control medium spare shader by the Optima is just the most wonderful versatile tool pen should I say in the arsenal of the Optima range I just absolutely love this pen it just you can use it for it's just so many purposes I do you use other pens other times like I say when we start doing this sword we'll definitely be getting the extra small space shade or even the micro skew on it which the Optima made some tips that are very small for very fine intricate work so when I do the sword handle on this scorpion I will show you that tip and just what it can do it's really fine detail so you see we're still just at the moment building like our bottom basing to this piece as we're as we're darkening at the bottom and pulling round eventually we will start to see the effect of the shape coming at us and depending how round you want to make it I don't want it obviously too round because it's I don't know what you call it like a a, a pear drop shape so I definitely do not want this tail flat as this is the main sting into the scorpion it's got to be striking we finish this piece and then we add the shadowing and stuff to it it hopefully will really pop off the wood been working on a staffy for a Good week and a half and we just had almost finished Gov the Staffy and just what was a rest day from the piece that is another good tip I could give you is when you creating art say if you've been spending say several days on one piece sometimes it's good to put it to one side and let it rest just let it sit for even two or three days even sometimes even longer I mean I've got pieces of art in various stages of the life I'm sure most of us will have most of you will understand what I'm talking about. We have many pieces in different stages and at some point we go back to them. So 
and revisit them again and then we may get involved with them again for a, a time now with this top piece of the stinging tail I want it obviously shaped in this way so I'm pulling the strokes just about nearly three quarter tip I'm flicking them in the direction that I want to shape and again what we have to think is say with this barb it's got on the top piece of this tail there's going to be like a a top to it isn't it it's not going to be flat it's, it's going to have some shape it's going to be a top ridge that's folding over to the other side and we want to try and capture that we do that by dark at the furthest point pulling the strokes round into the light and when we darken we push things back and the lighter shading next to it gives you an effect of in some shape and volume to the work. In the UK at the minute, today is actually we've had some sunshine with a bit of warm. We've not had much warmth at all this year yet. Today is a lovely day. It's said to be meant to rain a bit, but the last bit of sunshine is just leaving us, and the darker clouds are coming in. Still just flicking my strokes round as we as we get towards the, like the more middle shape we're lifting off with a pen so we're you know ever so lightly shading because the, the middle point let's call it the apex is going to be the lightest of shading and that will define that that particular part is the furthest forward to the eye and this is just how you create depth and volume you're trying to see in your mind's eye what you're trying to the shape you're trying to create that low heat excuse me so we've got control over it it's not dictating to us and it's not telling us you need to speed up or whatever but you've got full control I'd say like setting three on the medium spear shade on the optima is it's, it's quite up there it's quite high, even though it might not sound high. Three, three and a half, generally pretty high. So 
direction as you could be working down at one and a half under two to get delicate tones. Especially say if you're doing like skin tone, I need to move this round. Another key element when you're creating pyro is move the board when you need to get an area like here that I want to show this curling round this way I need to move my stroke in the direction that I want to achieve I couldn't possibly do it from the way I had the board so I have to turn the board upside down may take a bit of getting used to uh, working with an upside down board and then in here we've got like the because all the shell is the armour isn't it here's the inside joint Darkened up. Again, you can see I'm working from the outside, flicking my way round. start on the outside because then I'm building up darkness and depth excuse me I'm being sick Some smoke for a minute because it's not off the wood. And we've switched again. You see, at the moment, we're looking at this barb. This is where the extra small space shader would come into its own. We'd be able to work on that a lot finer detail. Today's lesson I'll just I'll just do a little bit of time just to try and explain about depth and volume and shape and contour and how we achieve it. I won't take you all the way with this tail. So it could take me well over an hour to get the polished shape that I'm looking for. Keep flicking it in the direction.
can sometimes work your way from the bulb as well because you're trying to pull it all to that middle apex furthest away part of the bulb would be the darkest as you push that back again that would be shaped as well wouldn't it wouldn't it be flat can only do work like this where you're showing depth only on a low heat if you were to try this on a high heat you would struggle because the heat would just get away from you but you'd be immediately at dark and you just have nowhere to go you know as soon as you've gone near enough damn it like black there's nowhere to go after that you can't get darker than the darkest so if just one thing you take away from today is turn down the heat layer and depth your way there let the heat absorb into the wood my friend at the optima who creates optima he would tell you about the properties of wood and how it absorbs heat and can show depth he knows all the correct scientific term which I, I don't know I can't remember he did explain it to me once but it did go over my head a little bit no, Pat at the Optima is he's a very knowledgeable guy about all things pyrography equipment wise he does a bit of pyro himself but so he once explained to me, he's like the pit boss. He knows about every single bit of the equipment, but he can't drive the car as well as, say, Lewis Hamilton or whatever. You know, but he knows he knows all the parts to the car. He just can't drive it as well. And that guy will blow your mind with some of the knowledge he's got. You may have to swap over to the a small space shader in a minute. Well, we have time wise 29 minutes. So 29 minutes has gone and we're not even halfway to the shape that I want to achieve. Just a scrap bit of wood, it just, just a piece for practice and to test some new techniques. That's what pieces like this can be, fun pieces can just be 
joys of practice. Unless you're immensely gifted, which some people are, then if you want to get really good at pyrography, you have to be willing to put the practice in. Every hour spent burning is an hour learning. There's a good poem. <laughs> Like that one. Every hour burning is an hour of learning. See, then there's, I know I've skipped off now to the part of this shell, but there's all these things. All these other parts take shape. Then sometimes your, your values may need to change. You could set this value and whatever and get your shape and then do this part and it could this could then look wrong. You often find with, say, that one of the good examples of that is a dog's nose. Let's say if you were to pyrography and you're doing a dog or an animal and you, you spent this time on this nose and, you know, the nostrils and you've got this shape, then you add the muzzle and all the sides of it and everything and then all of a sudden your nose looks wrong and all them hours you'd spent getting this wonderful nose it could need to be shaped differently light shading just rubbing back and forth here just starting to build like some shape to this piece of the armor and this is now where let's get the Extra small space shader. If you just give me a moment, just as you will find with the Optima as well, there is a huge range of pens available. I know I have a Peter Child machine. There's nothing wrong with a Peter Child, apart from you only get two pen choices is a tiny spear shader or a spoon where the optima there is lots of choice i'm turning this setting down to one and a half i'm gonna do a few testers on the darkest patch Some people have a piece of wood at the side of them to test what heat they're getting. I use the 
you know, through practice. I know it's a low heat setting for a pen. And I'll touch down in one of the darkest areas first and work my way in and see what subtle difference I'm getting. I think this is the extra small space shader. That's for intricate work. Don't know if you had a look at that uh, Viking warrior piece I did. The warrior's head was smaller than the size of my thumb. And with the extra small spear shade I could still get relatively good amount of detail. In such a small area. Uh, sometimes you might need your glasses or even a magnifying glass if you really want to go deep into the wood burning. I like to go really deep into it and immerse myself into whatever piece of art I'm doing. Using just the tip of the pen at the minute, and there is still graphite here. I don't want to rub out the sword yet. Let's keep them sword handles. Is there and that sword handle to show some more depth. I remember say just saying when I, as I was erasing and you're leaving your pen sitting, the pen is then building up more heat into it. And so sometimes if you have your heat on a high setting is when you can get what we call the blob. And that's when you've had your pen sat, say, for a few minutes, and then you touch down and just singe a blob of black char. And that's not what we're looking to do. We're not looking to char the wood. We want it still to stay smooth, it's not burnt. Get to them dark tones, just layer over and over. So that's all I want to show you really today was a little bit about how we start creating. depth and volume, spending the time working from the outside, pulling round for the shape and over time all of a sudden the shape will appear if you work it from both ends. So it's just all depends on what level 
you wish to take your own pyrography to if you just want to do it for fun then that's absolutely fine there's nothing wrong with that if you just want to do it as a hobby and just you don't want to go into super fine detail and spend hours and hours working on something to make it look as realistic as possible you could just do it for the therapy to me it's still very therapeutic even when I go into super fine detail I still find it really therapeutic and I get lost in the art for the time that I'm spending doing it. And sometimes you may even have to change your mind. Like I was gonna put like a middle piece in here but I'm not sure if it'd look right. So I won't go there for now. So I decide what I want that to look like. And you can always move that board so you can work in the direction of the shape. So I'll leave it there for now today hopefully we captured that on camera i'll be able to zoom you in we aren't anywhere there near the shape yet there's still a lot more shading to be done to get us to that sort of overly shape that we're looking for Not looking for a full ball, but certainly want some volume to this. Well, that's just one of the ways how you can start adding more depth to your pyrography work. So it's low heat layering up is what we call it building layers and the heat absorb into the wood over and over and eventually you will build this volume you, the heat will absorb in and your work will start to lift up and that's when the real magic of pyrography art and any art form that's when the magic really starts to kick in. Once you've captured that depth, that's when the real magic happens. It does, well, for me, it does. I love to try and always capture more and more depth. So I'll leave it there for now. Thank you for watching. Happy burning everybody. If you'd like to see more lessons in the future, little burning uh, journeys with me, you can hit subscribe, give me a like or a comment, whatever you feel like doing. And hopefully I should be able to pass on some of the things I've learned to those of you who are looking to advance your skills. Like I said every hour burnt every hour of burning is a lesson of learning, wasn't it? That was the one. So take care everybody and I will speak to you all soon. Bye for now.